If you want a mossy lawn, a weedy lawn, and a lawn that looks like a dog's dinner, then those are three reasons you don't really want to be watching this channel. But if you want a lawn that looks like Wembley, that looks like Old Trafford, that looks like the Emirates on the first day of the season in a few weeks, then stick with me and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so it's Wednesday the 17th of April. It's a chilly one in the shade. So let's get out of the shade and go over into the sun. So we can see it's come through the winter really well. Little bit of disease here and there, but nothing to worry about whatsoever. It's really full, so we don't even really need to do a lot here this year, but we are gonna be overseeding a little bit, just some of the areas where it's a bit patchy. Over here, where the water dripped off the tree, we have a bit of damage, so that'll need some attention, but we'll sort that out. What I've done this morning, just spent 10 minutes just walking over. There's just a few bits of grass like this one here which are just a bit longer than everything else now that's not annual meadow grass but it shouldn't be here because it's not looking the same as everything else so whilst we've got that in view we can just see, kind of see what it is so it's got like a, a reddish base so it is some kind of like rye grass but is it a rye grass that was in our mix i don't know but let's get it out anyway because it might be problematic later on in the year so we'll sort that out we'll just make a little reference with this petal then i can come back with my fork and get that out what else have we done here this year i haven't actually done much because of the weather just not been able to get here but it did get an application of inhibit about three weeks ago just to knock back any moss that we had growing under the hedge there and it was just a, it is a bit nutrition but we didn't want to make it grow much because we don't want the lawn outgrowing the seed that we're putting down so what we'll do is now We'll get the fork, get that bit of grass up that we don't like. One final scout to see if there's any more that we've missed. And then we'll get our rotary out first and we'll give it a cut. Start this scalping process to get it down and get all those petals picked up, etc, etc. So let's get on with that right now. So I have actually been working in the back garden as well, getting the annual meadow grass out of the back. And all this I've pulled out of the back. Absolutely ridiculous. But here's that little bit of grass that we had there. So we'll just gently tease it out. There we go. Don't know what it is, but we'll get it out because it looks unsightly. All right, so we've just done the first step today, which was getting rid of the annual meadow grass and any weed grasses. Now the second step, as always, is scalping the lawn. So I've just done a little bit of an area there, straight on number one just to see if it could cope, but it can. So I'll just crack on number one, get it all scalped, then we'll go over with the cylinder, get it even shorter, and then we can get with the scarifier, which will be step three. So let's get started. It'll be a quick video for you today because I've not got that much to do in terms of prep work, but for me, it'll be a long time, but for you, it'll be like five minutes while you watch. What would you rather be doing, doing it or watching it? I prefer to be doing it. All right, so that's the scalp done with the hater. Time to get on with the cylinder now. Now, why don't we scarify first and then more? Because the height of the scarifier is determined by the wheels. So if they can run true with the soil, we're gonna get deeper without having to adjust the dial. Whereas if we scarify before, we're gonna be just scarifying through the layers of grass on the top rather than actually getting into the soil. So that's why I do it that way. You can do it whatever way you want but I just tell you how I do it. So what we'll do now is we'll get the cylinder out, give this another scalp, we'll get closer with that, get rid of all this top growth. Just like when you prune your roses, you know, you might think, oh, you've got great roses there, but you chop them down to the ground, don't you? And then they grow again, and that's exactly what we do on the lawn. We just do the same process, grass, uh, roses, potentillas, things like that. We just chop them right back and they come back to the same height. Everything's crown, um, kind of relative so no, how big your crown is it'll always come back to that size so if you leave your grass to grow this high your crown is going to be massive so when you scarify it it's going to grow again now just a mental note to myself last year I caught my cylinder mower blade on that luckily on my old um, it was my old Kensington but a brand new set of blades and I caught it and damaged them beyond repair 400 quid down the drain 
So I'm going to stay away from this edge on the sterling this year and I'll strim them down to level. So the level with the flag there, with the bricks. They have like a ribbon effect, tumbled Indian stone, but this is fine because that's nice and smooth. So I can ride along that, but I'm going to stay away from that because sterling blades for a new set, I think are 600 quid. So we don't want to be doing any damage today. So let's get that out and we can crack on. All right, so I've just done a little test patch for you with the cylinder. Now you can see number one on the hair, so even though that looked pretty short, we're on 15 mil there on the sterling and that's how short it's gone. So you can see the difference now. And we can see the soil, which is great because we know the scarifying blades are really going to get in there and get rid of all that mess that's in there, all that slimy necrotic growth that's just been there over winter gathering. So we need to get that out. And then this coming year, we'll get it looking. Hopefully something like this from last year when we did the lawn care for the, for the uh, King's uh, coronation. Yeah. So it seems a long time ago that. It's been cold a long time. So I'm hoping to get some nice weather this year so we can get the lawn looking like that. There you go. I promised you a lawn that looked like Wembley. Stripes. Tartan stripes. Job done. So don't be scared. This is par for the course. It'll come back. But doing it this way, you're guaranteed to get better results. Because like I said in a previous video, when you're stripping a wall, wallpaper, you do a better job if you do it right. Strip it all off, sand it, polyfiller it you're going to get a miles better job than just papering over the paper that's already on the wall. That's what we're doing here. So have a closer look. We're back to stubble, which is good. So we'll get the scary fire running through this day. It's going to open it up. It's a bit slimy. Open that up. Earth can get through it. New grass can grow. And we're just going to put a tiny amount of seed on today. A little bit. Just for some freshness. Don't need much. And then in, what, three weeks, this lawn will be better. We'll probably be end up at the same point as when we did it for the King's Coronation last year, just because the temperatures will be hotter. Uh, maybe not as much water around, but we can add that. But um, we, last year we did this lawn on 3rd of April, I think it was, but it's the 17th today. So we're two weeks, like I said before, we're two weeks behind. And we're actually three weeks behind on the back because we did that on the uh, 27th of March, I think. So there's a bit of annual meadow grass there. So I've just got my fork. You can see it stands out more when it's stubbly. So you can see it standing out, it's got the white, the white base, so I'll just have another scout over, there's one there, and then there's one there, you see how it stands out, white, everywhere else is green, but that's white, so we know that's uh, annual meadow grass, and we'll get that out, so yeah, if I see any more, I'll just whip it out, get my fork out, my trusty fork, always in my pocket, for times like this. All right, so the next step in our lawn process is scarifying. We've got bladed scarifiers on this machine, whereas on like the Alex scarifier, you have the prongs. Today, we're gonna to use the blades first. She's gonna slice through the roots, get some thatch up as well. Not much, but we'll get it up. So we're constantly at soil level as the years go by. And then what we'll do is we'll get them with a the sterling, put the Alex scarifying cartridge in, and that'll pick up all that's been brought out and then we can get on with some seed. And finally, our field compost number four. So let's crack on. Okay, so a double pass with the scarifier. Let's have a look at the damage. Nice. So you can see we've got quite deep in there. Open that up. Got the wind blowing through it now. Dry it out a little bit. It's a bit uh, damp, but that's good because the seed will soak that up as well. 
onto this field conference number fours on it. So what we'll do now is we'll get on with the Sterling Scarifier. We'll get all this picked up and hopefully, even though it's got two rollers on it, it won't squash these holes up too much because this is a nice kind of a hole for the seed to fall into. It's too big a lawn to get my tool out and we'll go up and down that. So I won't be doing that. So we've just got to hope that the uh, roller doesn't squash it. And that's why I did a double pass in the end, just to give us two passes of the scarifier. And hopefully it'll just protect them holes from closing up. If they do half of them close up, we've still got the other pass that we did keeping us going was if we just did one pass and the scarifier closes it up with nothing. So that's what I was thinking. But yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Don't be scared again, just do it. You've seen it come back. I know it looks pretty aggressive and brutal, but the grass loves it. It actually prefers it than not doing it. That's the truth. And it'll come back with renewed vigor. And I'm looking forward to seeing this one come back like it was last year. Welcome to Luxury Ratten Direct. Come and see our large range of quality garden furniture here in Bamber Bridge, Preston. Or buy direct from our website with prices to suit everyone's budget and sizes to suit everyone's garden. LuxuryRattenDirect.co.uk Shopping for garden furniture has never been so easy. Alright, so I've just started two strips there with this scary fan attachment in on the outlet. And I've just left it on the height that we cut at 15 mil and it's picking that up great. So I don't need to adjust that. So we'll crack on and get the rest done. Alright, so I've just nearly finished. I've got a couple of strikes to do, but I need to swim to the box. So I thought I'd show you what the Scarifying attachment has picked up. All this. So all this is what came out from the Scarifier. Look at all that dead growth. So that's why we Scarify. Because if we don't get rid of this every year, it's just going to build up in the ground. And then the grass will start growing from that. And then there's your sponge layer. And that, in essence, what thatches. If we don't get it out, that is what you're going to end up with, that spongy layer and then the grass going through. So when you get with your mower, it's going to sink, your blades are going to be closer to the floor and you're going to end up scalping and all kinds. Water can't get through, so you're going to get moss. So that is why we scarify. Okay, so as you can see, the sun is not over here and it's two o'clock. So this is going to be representative of what is going to happen in the future. So just in this area last year it took a while to come through just because it was in the shade a lot, as you can see. So I've just got my seed slotter out and I've just opened up this area here. Just so the seed can get a bit deeper and hopefully it can take a bit quicker. Because uh, last year it didn't come through quite as quick as we'd like. So on with the seeding now. All picked up nice. Ready to go. Then we're ready for the field compost number four. All right, so that's the seed on. Just went over a little bit more on this area because it's a bit more bald, just because it gets a lot of wear and tear where we turn the mower, and because it doesn't dry out as quick, it gets a bit more damage. So I just repaired that a bit more. Put the dial on 32 on the spreader, filled the spreader up and went over it. I've not put more than five kilograms on because I only brought five and I've got about half a bag left. So I probably use about two and a half kilos over 160 square meters. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mix up some wetting agent, some H2GO, get that on, get it on the seed so that'll soften quicker, take that in, any water to go with it and that'll get it germinated quicker. And then we'll do the second dose on top of the field compost as we normally do. And then it's supposed to rain later, so we don't need to water it. We'll just let nature do that and we can call this one done. So let's get the wetting agent on and then we can get on with the field compost number four. All right, that's the hitch to go on. Just to tell you again why we put it on now before the field compost number four. That's gonna hit the seed, it's gonna soften the husk so water can get in easier to receive the signal to start growing. So that's why we do that. Now remember, if you're mixing up 
the batch to go on now and then on top of the compost like I do. It's not twice as much product. It's the same amount of product, but twice the amount of water. So there's enough for two doses. So you're not putting two doses of wetting agent on, you're putting half dose on, but the same amount of water to cover the area. Hopefully that made sense, made sense to me. If it didn't to you, just let me know and I'll tell you again. All right, it's time now for the field compost again. Just a few more jobs to do. We've got Steve's job, we've got Britain's best lawn to do, and the posh job that we're doing, we're doing that one as well. And we've got the back here to do, we'll do that another time. So now we get a nice spell of weather. I think it's supposed to rain heavy tomorrow, but that'll be great, because it'll wash this job in, and all the other jobs that I've already done as well. So I've not done any watering yet, which is good. I fully expect that to change. It'll be one of them where we go from just like constant rain to like under degree heat, and then we'll be having the sprinklers on and everything and people say it's only just stop raining and we're having the sprinklers on but that's sometimes how it is especially on the really exposed lawns where they're just in full sun all the time so i'm a bit croaky today if you notice and that's because i was at the match last night the bolton match um so as we discussed on my good friday video i thought portsmouth and derby would go up well portsmouth did their business last night did what they had to do they did what they had to do at our place on saturday and they did what they had to do at their place last night. Now, what we didn't do was what we needed to do Saturday against them. And what we needed to do last night against Shrewsbury, we ended up drawing 2-2. Two, two. Exciting game towards the end because we were obviously going for the third, but just passing it around, not really doing anything. So it's a bit annoying sometimes. So we were shouting and screaming and we should have scored earlier than we did for the second. Cross came and they had to do a edit like that, but they ended up trying to chest it in. Couldn't believe it, the whole, what 20 20 000 people just were all like why didn't he edit that was the most probably searched term on google last night why did Og better not head it that was probably it and all the enos i don't know why where we got asked at full time by the manager what were you doing but did it cost us we got two all anyway and if he just scored that there's no saying we would have gone on and won the game we might have gone on and lost the game we'll never ever know but we have to hope derby lose now on Saturday and we had to win against Port Vale and then we'd be level points but hopefully if we can score a few against Port Vale we'll have a better goal difference and then if we went to Peterborough and won there we could still go up but I think it's a playoff. So I said Portsmouth and Derby on Good Friday and they have done for a while uh, just because they have not been slipping up as much as we have uh, but it means we, you know, we get two more games and a possible trip to Wembley, so it's not all bad. And I like being in League One because we're winning all the time, or most of the time. If we go to Championship, we might be losing every week. And you know, you're paying all the money for the season ticket and watching yourself lose 20, 21, 22 times out of 23 maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it would be any good. If you look at Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth, they, you know, they could both come back down. And they only went up last season. Obviously, Ipswich, the exception there, they're in the... The hunt, but they're bottling it as well. A lot of teams are bottling it at the moment, as the the phrase seems to go. So I don't know, but it always happens. You never, only a few times as a team run away with it. Wolves, maybe before they got in the Premier League last time, they ran away with it. But generally, always there's always chokers, and then somebody comes from nowhere and takes the final place. But yeah, all exciting, exciting times. I love the end of the season with all the big games things start to come into play but yeah somebody has to lose and I think it's going to be Bolton this time so yeah so I'll crack on with the rest of this compost now what I just wanted to say was uh, I've not been telling you generally one bag of field compost spread like I'm doing now will cover eight to ten square meters if the grass is longer you're not going to be able to spread it as fast because it'll get trapped and you'll lose a lot but because it's short another reason why I scalp it you get more at your top dressing as well but yeah generally eight to ten meters i'll see you round about right so yeah so i'll crack on and we'll see you when i'm finished Finally, we just spray the remaining H2 go wet agent. Notice I'm going backwards just so I don't get my feet wet and pick up the field compost number four in the grips on my shoes. 
all right so that's this video done we've got there in the end what have we done today we've scalped scarified obviously did top dressed put a wetting agent on what we're going to be doing next time here is going in the back and getting that done plenty more to do as well as the year goes on remember as well you've got your field compost 10% off code DHLE10 and that's at fieldcompost.co.uk why would you not want to take advantage of that really easy to work with does a great job it's black so when the sun shines and it gets really hot and you see it's just going to come through straight away before I go I'm going to give you three reasons why you should listen to me and there because I know what I'm talking about two I love grass and three I've got everything you need for you to get along looking like this and looking like Wembley in the future so hope oh, you've enjoyed this one take care and we'll see you next time here on Daniel Hibbert Lawn Expert bye for now oh and don't forget to like and subscribe